some of the revelations. Well, after several months, I think we are. But I will, the Lord will, in one Sunday, go back and we'll do a very quick summary. Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. I want to speak for just a moment. The Lord will help me, and I can't say nor do anything without God's help this morning. And I'll try not to be very long. But if you would give it a title this morning, I want to speak for a moment on which he had promised. Father, touch us this morning. Give us the words to say. Bless your word. Help your word to go forth and help it to accomplish the things that you send it forth to do. And Lord, will ever be mine, we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Let hearts be touched. Let us look unto Jesus and realize the gift that was given. In Jesus' name, amen. You want to keep your Bibles close by your side. Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised, notice that, go to mark it, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scripture. Titus. One verse there I want to read this one in Titus chapter 1. Verse 2, Titus 1 and 2. And hope of eternal life, which God, now notice this, you ought to mark this, which God that cannot lie promised. When did he promise that? Before the world began. Let that sink in just a minute. Matthew chapter 2, verse 5. They said unto him, The king Herod has asked the wise man where Christ is to be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, In thy Bethlehem in the land of Judah, Art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Messiah promised a time. We're coming up now in the time of year that we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. We're to celebrate his birth every day. Because it was the greatest gift that was ever given unto man. And it was promised before. You see, Jesus is the core message of the Old Testament. A lot of people say you ought to just take the Old Testament and do away with it. No, you can't do away with the Old Testament. Because Christ Jesus is the core message that you find in the Old Testament. Back in Genesis 3 and 15, we had man had sinned and had lost his standing with God. Death had came upon man. And when death passed upon Adam, death passed upon me and you, Brother Larry. And the consequences of sin came upon the generations thereafter Adam. But thanks be to God, which before the world began had made a way where there seemeth to be no way that we might come to Christ Jesus. Jesus and there again be a part of the family of God. In Genesis 3 and 15 it is spoken and I will put enmity speaking of the serpent between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his 
heal. You see, all the way from Genesis, all the way to Revelation, Brother Gary, we have that scarlet thread of redemption. We see the cross of Jesus Christ. Why is the cross so important? Brother Doug, why do you keep mentioning the cross? Because there is no other way. It was God's plan of redemption before the foundation of the world. He already had a way to reach out into me and you in 2016 and bring salvation to us that we might be His family. We hear hear God speak of her seed. Woman has no seed. We know He is speaking here of the virgin birth, that the virgin birth would take place. Man want to laugh about it. Man want to cast it aside. But had not spotless blood flowed in Christ's vein, we would be lost and undone. But there was no sin found in Christ Jesus. He was born of a virgin. In Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, Listen, therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. What is Emmanuel? Emmanuel means God with us. And I'm so thankful that God came down that He might dwell among us and make a way for us where there seemeth to be no way. The verses that I just read to you in the book of Matthew. I wish we had time. We don't. We, we, there's no way. I mean, we would take several Sundays from here on out to discuss every verse of the prophecy of Christ Jesus. There's 400 years, at least 400 forgotten years, lost years in between the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, and before we first hear prophecy or words spoke again, they call it the silent years in Matthew and in the Gospels. And we see Christ Jesus come upon the scene. How could all these prophecies come to pass in Christ Jesus? Now, I'm no mathematician. In fact, some of the numbers that I was reading, I wish I had Brother Brandon there. He could tell you what they were. But I tell you, when they get stretched out that long... I don't know if it's a billion or a trillion. I, I just get all confused up, you know. I can do one plus one, three plus three, and all those things, but you get them zero stretched out way. But it is unreal the odds that these prophecies could come to pass in the birth of one individual, and that birth was Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And the the scripture that I just read to you in Matthew, Micah was the one who prophesied that in Micah chapter 5 and in verse 2. He foretold of the village of the place where Christ would come. Now think about this. Just stop and think about this for just a moment. That it narrows the possibility that Messiah could come forth to one little tiny village. How could that be? How, how, could, how could that prophecy come to pass? Look at the things that took place, the taxation that had to be, so that Joseph and Mary would have to go into the city of Bethlehem, the city of David, and there they would have to give in their taxes. Think about all the things that took place for this one prophet. This one prophecy should be proof in itself. But God needs no proof. God's Word needs no proof. God's Word stands on its own. Christ Jesus is yea and forever. In Genesis 49 and 10, he speaks to Judah and he talks about that Judah, that there would be a law giver that would come and that Shiloh would come forth from Judah and that the seed would come forth that would save the world. And after this in Genesis 49 and 10, some 2,000 years after Jacob's death, we see Christ Jesus born. You can read in the book of Luke chapter 3. You can read in Matthew chapter 1. And you see the ancestry of Jesus Christ our Lord and you see that his birth, the lineage that was said, came forth and all was fulfilled in Christ Jesus, his birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. Amen. Glory, hallelujah, all by Christ Jesus. In the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 through 10, we won't turn there this morning and read, but we read about a branch that came forth. In fact, let's look there right quickly. There's some beautiful words, and I'm afraid you won't 
Go back this week and read it. And I just want to quickly read it in you here in Isaiah 11. Listen to these beautiful words. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. Listen to verse 2. Now Jesse was the father of David. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And the Spirit of wisdom and understanding and the Spirit of counsel that might be the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with iniquity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lay down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them speaking of the millennial time that will happen that Jesus Christ will rule and reign upon the throne of David and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Brother Doug, you believe it? Yes, I do. I believe the Word of God. I believe Revelation chapter 20. I believe Revelation chapter 21 that these things shall happen. The suckling child shall not play on the hole of the asp and the winged child shall put his hand on the cockroach's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious." Thank God that that branch was raised. Thank God that that root came forth, Christ Jesus our Lord. We are told in Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 4 through 8 that a branch from David, David was told he, his heart sought after the Lord that he might build the Lord a house. You know we have a lot of desires that we want to do things for God. A lot of times we try to do things that God's not called us to do. That's why we stump our toe. That's why we mess up a lot of times. And David, just he just wanted to do something so much for God. And he called the prophet in and said, I want to build a house for God. I want to make him the greatest house that there ever was. And the prophet, of course, that sounds good. Man, come up to me tomorrow and say, I want to build you a big church. I'm going to talk with him. I've learned from the Word, though, to talk to God first before we turn him loose. But the prophet said, man, that's great. Let's, let's go forward. Let's do this. But when the prophet got home, God said, no. David's not going to build me a house. He has too much blood upon his hands. I've already got that. I'm thankful that David had it in his heart. In essence, is what God's saying. But I know he loves me because he wants to do that. But I've already got all these things worked out. Send him back and tell him, though, I'm going to build... Whew, I love this. I'm going to build him a house. And his seed shall never fail to set upon the throne. Speaking of Christ Jesus, our Messiah. His promises, listen, and I'm going to close. His promises are true. They are yea and they are everlasting. A lot of people say, if I could see the Christ of the Bible, then I'd believe. If I could see the miracles and all the things being done, then I'd receive. Let me just tell you, if you cannot see this Word being brought to pass day by day and moment by moment, you are willingly blinded. Brother Doug, how come so many people don't turn to the Lord Jesus Christ when all these promises can be checked and all these prophecies can see that they came forth from these prophets many years before Christ ever came forth? 
Why do people not believe? Why do they not receive? It is because they are willingly blinded and they do not want to receive and they do not want to perceive and turn their hearts and their lives over to God. You see, we are people that want it our way. We turn from God and we turn from the things of God and we want it our way instead of trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. His promises are true and everlasting. He made a way. He made a way where there was no way. Sin entered the world and when sin entered in, God, hear me this morning, God will not pat sin on the head. God will not lead you while you're in sin. When you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, your life will change. All things will pass away, and behold, all things will become new. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what you you might think. I don't care how sincere you are. God will never go against this book. And what he says is sin, then is sin today. And he came to want to save us from sin. How do we do that? By simple faith in the cross of Calvary. By believing in him and allowing him to come into our hearts and into our lives. His word will be fulfilled. That which he promised. You know what happens a lot of times, and I'm going to hush. The old song, Standing on the Promises of God. We can stand on the promises of God. The problem is, you see, we don't want to stand on God's promises. We want to mold God and shape God in the image that we want Him to be. The problem is a lot of times we try to be the potter instead of being the clay that we are. But if we will stand on His promises. To often it says stand on His promises, we're standing on the premises, on the outside. Amen. We get just near enough of God to be miserable. You'll know the most miserable person in the world is somebody who who really knows there's a God, but yet they've not got it down in their heart. Those who go through the motion. I've heard people say, oh, well, because I said a certain word, I'm going to have to throw $20 in the offering. Keep you $20. Church will go on without it. And it ain't going to do you one bit of good. Only by faith in the cross and believing in Him. Standing on His promises. What He said will come to pass. Father, I thank you for those things which you promised before. I've seen them fulfilled in my life, Lord, day by day. I thank you, Lord, when you know that man would be lost, you looked down and you desired us. And you made a way through your son by simple faith and by simply believing. Thank you for that great gift of Christ Jesus. Let us see God is not our way. We don't come to you our way. We come to you by faith. The cross of Calvary and giving you all. I ask Lord, there's one here this morning, one later, who listened to the ministries of the church that, Lord, that this has touched their heart. Help them this morning to receive you as Lord and Savior. 
I pray, Lord, if there's one here this morning who is, feels as though they are drowning and sinking, let them know that your promises are true. They are yea, and they are everlasting. Heads bowed, eyes closed for just a moment. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I mean really know Him. Know that you know that should He step out on the clouds of glory, that you'll go to be with Him. Today's your day. Today's your day. Because He could come today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you eagerly watching? Are you eagerly waiting? You ought to be. You're to have a desire and cry out, Come, Lord Jesus. I'm going to talk to you from my heart from just a moment. I'm going to hush. We live in this world, do we not? I live in this old world with you. You can look up this to me if you want to. I live in the same world you do. I get discouraged, I get despondent, I get depressed. I see all the things that's happening in the world. And I see all these things, the old devil's just, and I'm not giving him no credit, but he's just kind of been after me the last two or three weeks. But when God began to speak this sermon to my heart, he began to let me know his promises are true. Brother Larry, I just look around this morning and I see the promises of God. Tangible promises that I can touch. And I see those promises that I know. I know I'm a child of God. I know I'm one of His. I know He's saved me. I know He's brought me to the family of God. And I'm going to stand on His promises. I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to face when I get outside this church. I have no idea, but I know in whom I believe and whom I trust that He is able to keep me. I've heard people say, and I, and I see it every once in a while, Facebook is an amazing thing. And I see people say, I'm done. I'm throwing my hands up. I'm quitting. I think, well, where are you going back to? People serving God. And I know I live in the same world you do. I know there's times you think, what's the use? What's the use not to? What do you want to go back to? You want to go back to the world? There's nothing there. But I've got my eyes. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, it gets foggy every once in a while, Brother David, but I've got my eyes. Looking unto Jesus, the author. But Gary, when those things come, I just stop a minute and I look back up to Jesus. Because I know one of these days, the grace that saved me. Sure, there's troubles, trials, situations. But the grace that saved me is that grace is going to lead me home. I want us to leave this house this morning standing. If you're a child of God, if you're not a child of God, if you don't know Him as Lord and Savior, you can't stand nor claim the promises of God. That game won't work. But I want us to leave this house this morning standing on the promises of God. Let's stand. We're going to be dismissed and we're going to pray and we're going to ask God to keep us in His will. Father, First of all, I want to thank you, Lord, for what you've done in my life. How good you've been to me. It is past my understanding. It is past my comprehension. I thank you this morning. I thank you, Lord, for the congregation that you've called me to be a part of. I thank you for each one of them, those that are here, those that are not here. Those that hadn't been here in a long time. I thank you for. Help us to stand on your promises. Help us not to look to the right hand nor to the left. 
Help us not to take our eyes off of Jesus. But help us look unto you. Lord, when the waves began to crash and the situations began to happen, help us to look to Jesus and your cross and know that we walk in your grace daily. We stand. Having done all, we stand on the promises of God which are true and are yea and are everlasting. In Jesus' name.